Now one of the ratios that you're going to find you're going to work a lot with in grade 10 and it will continue and grow, it will add on to it in grade 11 and 12, is that of the liquidity ratio. So I'm looking at question 46 here where they ask us to comment on the liquidity. Now when we look at liquidity, li liquid is, is uh, water. But from a financial point of view, when we're looking at liquidity, we're looking at cash. So what we want to know is, have we got enough cash resources in the business in order to pay all its debts? Now basically cash does one of two things. It'll come into the business and then you'll use that to, to run your business so it'll go out of the business. So it comes in and it goes out. Amongst the things that it'll go out on is to pay all the accounts. So from a liquidity point of view, what the business wants to know is how much cash is in the business or how much cash is expected to come into the business in the short term. And very importantly, we're looking at short term here. And how much do we owe? How much is expected to go out? So have we got enough cash to meet all our debts? We obviously need enough, otherwise we're going to run into financial problems. But likewise, we also don't want too much cash in the business. Too much cash means money is lying around idle. And you would rather take that money and invest it into a fixed deposit where you can earn a higher return. So the first thing we need to know when we're doing liquidity, it, in this particular question, it asks you to quote two liquidity financial indicators. So you need to identify the financial indicators. Now the financial indicators that we are looking at is around our cash and cash resources. So we're looking at our current assets and our current liabilities. And if you look in the question paper on which you've given, we were given some indicators. It's the current ratio and the asset test ratio. Current assets, the current ratio is all your current assets as a ratio to your current liability. And the asset test ratio takes away stock. So we have got some answers worked out for you. Now the first thing, you do need to know how to work out these ratios, but I'm not doing that in this particular uh, video, so please focus on the memo. It does tell you and it takes you how to go through it. But more importantly, the question is saying to you that you've got to quote the two indicators and the trend, so just focus that trend and then comment on whether the business will be able to meet its short-term debt in the next financial year. So if we look at this current ratio and the asset test ratio, the current ratio, if we compare it from last year to this year, has actually increased from 1.8 to 2.2. What that means is that in the current year, for every one rand you owe, you've got two rand 20 in current assets, which is enough to cover your debts, obviously. The problem with the asset test, the current ratio, is it includes inventory. And it, businesses don't really want to be put into a position where they've got to sell their inventory to pay their debts. They'd rather use that money to buy more inventory to keep the business going. And so we do the asset test ratio, or the final ratio, which excludes inventory. Now if we exclude inventory, it, in other words, we're looking at how much cash we've got in cash and cash equivalent and how much is expected to come in from our trade and other receivables, our debtors. And here we'll notice that there's been a decrease from 1.5 is to 1 to 1 1.3 is to 1. Now that's what we mean by the trend. We compare from one year to another. So the first thing you need to do in answering is name the two. Secondly, compare from last year to this year with the ratios. Right, so in this business, we can honestly say that they don't have a liquidity problem. They've got enough current assets here, whether they include inventory or not, to pay off their debts. But we need to go one step higher now. While we want to make sure we've got enough, we also don't want too much. And let's just look at what I mean by that. Our current assets are broken up into our inventory, our trade and other receivables, and our cash. Now, a business doesn't want too much inventory. Inventory can go off, it can go out of fashion, it can get damaged, it, it costs insurance, it costs storage. So businesses want to get the stock in and out as quickly as possible. 
Now, if we look at the difference between these two ratios there, it might indicate, if we subtract those two, 0, 0,9, that is what is made up to, you could say nearly one of the current assets is made up of inventory. And so maybe they need to look and see are they not holding too much inventory. Trade and other receivables is your debtors. People owe you money. And obviously you want them to pay you as quickly as possible. You don't want accounts outstanding for 30, 60, 90 days because that's going to have an effect on your liquidity. And likewise, it's not good to have a lot of cash, as I indicated to you earlier. Cash, this is money lying in a normal savings account or a bank account on which you're earning probably no interest. So if you've got spare cash, it's always better to put it into a fixed deposit where you can earn a higher return. So when you're commenting on these ratios, you need to bear in mind that you don't want it too low, but you also don't want it too high. Now, many of you have probably been taught by your teachers that the norm is two is to one for the current ratio and one is to one for the asset test. Now, these are literally only guidelines. The business world doesn't use those anymore because they're a little bit too narrow. But if you've been taught them, use that. And you can see from that, we're aiming to get it to the norm or as close to the norm as we want can. We don't want it too high and we equally don't want it too low. So practice on sorting that out. Don't just take the narrow view and say that no matter how high it is, it's good. You need to start looking at a little bit more depth.